Our next presenter this afternoon is Kim Lorenz. Kim, a Rotarian for 27 years, is the Rotary Liaison for World Vision. As liaison, Kim is developing a business model between World Vision and Rotary International and microfinance projects. World Vision is very involved with large Rotary projects in many parts of the world. This $2.2 billion NGO is the largest privately funded humanitarian organization worldwide with over 25,000 employees in 100 countries. Please welcome Kim Lorenz. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to be amongst so many Rotarians that exemplify the motto of service above self. I've been in Rotary 28 years and it wasn't until I really started traveling around the world with world vision that I realized what I really didn't know about Rotary and how extensive it really is. So I'm very pleased to be here. I've got 10 minutes to talk about a $2 billion organization that matches funds with Rotaries, does projects all over the world. It's not enough time, but I'm going to talk fast and go through it, and I hope you can all enjoy it. I'm a retired businessman, and I've been a major donor to World Vision, and I was asked to go on a trip with them one time and see what they do. I tried to get out of it, but some friends of mine had put money into microfinance, demanded that I go, and this is the rest of the story. So now I work there part-time on a stipend, developing projects with Rotary, and I'm working probably about 70 hours a week in my part-time work right now. <laughs> but I'm having a lot of fun. I, what I really want to get across today is the synergies that I can show you between World Vision and Rotary and how you might take advantage of the synergy. I'm going to explain a few of them, some details about World Vision, what their mission is, and how to develop the opportunities we have between the two organizations. And I think you'll find as you see this that it's 100 percent compatible with what our own Rotary Action Group, WASHRAG, has been talking about today. So let me start by talking a little bit about World Vision, what they do, how they do it. It's a, it's a very gutsy company that's working in some of the most dangerous parts of the world, including Honduras, where our national director was just kidnapped for the second time and robbed. They work in the poorest and often most dangerous places, such as Lebanon, the Gaza Strip, Afghanistan, Mauritania, Kenya, Honduras, as I stated, Uganda, and many more. And they stay in these communities that they work in for 15 to 20 years. Everything they do is driven from the community up. They're in 100 countries, as was mentioned, around the world. Many of you who have traveled to some of these countries have seen the World Vision signs. My first real trip with Rotary was in Ethiopia, where they were doing water projects right inside the areas that World Vision was already working and you'll see just a little bit later on in the slides uh, what, uh, what we were able to do to match on their project. World Vision has a slogan, Building a Better World for Children. It's very compatible with Rotary's own mission statement. Now, I suspect that most of you here have children. Many of you have grandchildren. If you don't fit either one of those categories, at least I know your parents had children. My wife and I have three children, and we now have three grandchildren. I know before I had children, I had a lot of opinions about how other people raise their children. Now that I have them, I just keep my mouth shut. <laughs> but one of the reasons that we can laugh about children is it's a universal experience worldwide. Raising children is, is something we share with people from every nation around the world. In my travels, I found that every parent wants good things for their children, and all of us want our children to have a better future. Children are our most valuable natural resource, was a comment made by Herbert Hoover. World Vision focuses specifically on the needs of children around the world because we believe a key to a more prosperous future depends on children. It really depends on a generation of children growing up into leadership positions. They're the repository of the world's future hopes and dreams. They can become the doctors, the leaders, the teachers, and the farmers of tomorrow, or they, they can become the rebels, the armies, and the insurgents and terrorists. Which they choose depends on their experiences. Were their childhood safe? Did they have access to food, water, and health care? Did they go to school? Do they believe their future holds an opportunity for them? Or do they believe that the future is unfair, a world in which they have no choices, is there is a world of despair and hopelessness with little correlation 
between what they do, the efforts they put forth, and the result they can't expect. So we adopted a vision, a world vision, a new statement that our vision for every child, life in all of its fullness, our prayer in every heart, the will to make it so. Life in all of its fullness. It's a phrase that describes what most of us in North America experience and have seen with our children. But what about the kids in the other parts of the world? And what about their parents? And what do they want for their children? How do they feel knowing there'll be no college for their kids? There will be no education at all past maybe the fifth grade. There'll be no sports or music lessons, no games to attend, no summer camps, no opportunities to become a teacher, a doctor, or a journalist that their children may be hungry, hungry because they can't provide enough food for their own children, that the water they drink will certainly make them sick, as we know so well, and perhaps take their life, that they cannot take their children to a doctor when they have an ear infection or a broken bone, or they have malaria, tuberculosis, guinea worm, that in their world, 10, 20, even 30%, as we know, of their children will die before their fifth birthday. That is not life in all of its fullness. Meaning, meaningless words for so many children around the globe. So why am I here and what am I going to talk about with water? What can we do together? Because many of you don't know much about World Vision. Let me take a moment and let you know what we do and how we do it. The organization was founded in 1950. It's a Christian relief and development organization dedicated to helping children and their communities worldwide reach their full potential by tackling all the causes of poverty. We serve the world's poor regardless, equally, regardless of religion, race, ethnicity, or gender. But our uniqueness comes from how World Vision accomplishes their work. World Vision is also a relief and development organization that you hear about on the TV. That's most of the news coverage, but that's really only about 30% of what they do. That's the earthquakes, the hurricanes, the famines, tsunamis, wars, refugees. I just toured all of Honduras and all the devastation from Hurricane Mitch in the areas that World Vision works there. Those are the things, as I say, that are in the media. But about 70% of what World Vision does is the development work. It's really what we call the hard work in the hard places over the long haul. Places like Angola, Haiti, Afghanistan, Niger, Sudan, Burma, Colombia, Pakistan, and now even Kenya. Development involves working alongside poor communities to help them tackle all the root causes of poverty, not just treat the symptoms as many organizations do. It's community driven entirely, just as Ron says, if you don't do it with and through the community, you're destined to fail. The result is that their community begins to rise out of the circumstances that make them poor. World Vision's approach is not to give handouts, it doesn't work. Rather, it's offering a hand up and tapping into the hard work and resourcefulness of the people who, with whom we work so they can solve their own problems. Our approach is best characterized by the proverb, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. If you teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. World Vision's goal is to work themselves out of a job after the 15 to 20 years that they'll stay in that community. And a community usually envelops 20 or 30 villages. But because poverty is complex and its causes are so varied, we believe it's, that simplistic solutions will just not work. That slide didn't work the way it's supposed to, but it's supposed to come in in pieces, but you can see the puzzle that it puts together. There's five main areas that we work in these communities, and that's the water, the health, the agriculture, the education, and the microeconomic development, the last portion that you have to do, which includes microfinance. If you build a house for a poor family and they have no food, they're still poor. So World Vision has programs to work with the farmers to address the chronic malnutrition and food insecurity through sustainable agriculture and animal husbandry methods. If you improve the availability of food but they don't have health care, children still have high mortality rates. So World Vision educates the communities in the basic, basic health care, first aid, HIV, AIDS prevention, maternal health practices, and they build the clinics in these communities, all in coordination with the country ministers of health. If health care is present, but the drinking water is unsafe, and we already know the answer to that, people still constantly become sick. So World Vision tackles the problem with clean water boreholes, rainwater catchment systems, and a variety of other 
water solutions, including community-wide sanitation programs, hygiene training, especially in all the schools. Today, there are currently about $75 million worth of water projects going on with World Vision. But food, water, and health care are insufficient to lift a community without education. So World Vision endeavors to make sure children are in the schools learning. They build the schools. They rehabilitate the schools in these communities. Just as in America, education is critical to escaping from poverty. At any given time, you'll find up to 4,000 individual schools either being built, reconstructed, or repaired in the World Vision Network. But if you bring food, health care, clean water, education, the family still don't have a way to, to have a livelihood. You have to have some sort of economic development. The family and the community are still poor. So World Vision offers microfinance programs which provide the loan capital. They have 47 banks out of the 100 countries they work in. One of the best in Central America, one of the highest rated microfinance institutions is in Honduras. I just had the president in my home last week. And as Bono said, one of Bono's first trips over to Africa was with World Vision. Give a man a fish. I don't need to read it to you, but what a great uh, takeoff on the, the old proverb. And why is it women? Now that the women aren't fetching water, as we've said, what a tr tremendous opportunity. And you give the women the opportunity to start these businesses, give them the money. All over the world, every one of you have seen it, if you've been to a developing nation, who does all the work, it's the women. They take care of the children and they repay their loans. And that's why the loan repayment of the half billion dollars that World Vision has invested in microfinance, 98.2% is repaid because it's mostly women. World Vision has learned that unless all of the factors I've addressed aren't simultaneously attacked, then the communities cannot overcome the poverty in a way that really is sustainable. When you work in a community to address all these changes, a virtuous cycle of positive change gains momentum and the rising tide lifts all boats. Today we work in 100 countries around the world with some 25,000 staff, 95% of whom are all nationals in the country that they work. How do we fund the work and how do I raise the funds? How do we put the projects together to raise the money with, with Rotary? There's over one million individual donors in the United States and we also receive donations from hundreds of corporations and foundations. We're the favored partner of the U.S. government and also receive grants from the, universe, from the governments of Japan, Australia, Canada, the U.K., Germany, Italy, and many more, including Israel. Our worldwide revenues, as were mentioned in 2007, were $2.2 billion, making us one of the largest humanitarian organizations in the world. The U.S. alone raised $977 million, almost half of the total worldwide funding. There's a brochure that you'll find outside I left on the counter. It'll give you a lot of the data that I've already given you today and give you some of the information about World Vision in general. But it only addresses the U.S. offices, which are the $977 million. We feel privileged to be one of Rotary's partners, and I feel privileged to be the Rotary liaison at World Vision to help develop these relationships. I want to give you some examples of a grant application that we have in now, and then I'm going to just talk to you about a few others very briefly. But here you have a situation where the uh, Rotary clubs in a couple of districts went together and raised about $100,000. When you take the district funds from the two districts, the DDF funds that were matched to that, and the Rotary Foundation on top of that, it equals 250. Then I work with World Vision, we do a campaign, we raise the other 250 to make it a $500,000 grant. Tony, you were saying, how do we get these things leveraged up? Then the Hilton Foundation in the case of Ethiopia has agreed to match those grants with 500,000 for a total million. We're doing two of those projects, one in Northern Ethiopia, one in Southern Ethiopia, totally in conjunction with our wash rag uh, zone person, uh, Arvid out in Seattle, and it was written by the Rotarians in Ethiopia. The grant was totally written by the Ethiopians. It's rotary driven from the bottom up. So we do the hard work that has to be done in some of the hardest places of the world, just as we do with Rotary. What are we doing with Rotary? I'm getting funds matched from clubs, districts, the Rotary Foundation on a variety of projects. We're connecting clubs in countries. I'll just briefly tell you that. I've got about a minute left. In Haiti, we're just completing a project. It was $1 million from Rotary and $1 million from World Vision. It was facilitated by World Vision through District 5950. 
in Kenya, Rotary just completed a very successful project to the tune of 1.5 million with the CDC and some other partners. They came to us and said, we can't run this ourselves. We need some help. We want to grow it. Would you take over the project? Oh, and by the way, would you give us $700,000 for it? World Vision put in 1.4 million into this project. It's taking it over with the Rotary contractor. It's a three and a half million dollar project total now for the second phase. Yeah, I already mentioned the ones in Ethiopia and Angola. A Rotary District said we want to make an impact in the world in agriculture, the Central California, the breadbasket of the United States. Where can we make the biggest impact? Our national director in Angola called me. I've never met the man. He said, I have the project you want. I said, well, we have to have a Rotary Club. He says, well, I've been to the club. They're willing to be the host club. They want to do it. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm getting the stop sign here. Uh, World Vision's putting in $500,000 to match $500,000 from Rotary. And then he arranged for the government of Angola to bring in a million dollars for a $2 million project. Do our offices all understand Rotary? No, that's the other half of what I do. And I mentioned uh, real quickly religion. I just want to say it briefly. World Vision cannot proselytize. It's against their policy and they'd be run out of any country they work in if that's what they were trying to do. I'd like you to be comfortable with that. Rotary Foundation is comfortable with that. They're not missionaries. They do what they do because the Christian faith asks Christians to serve the poor. They don't support churches. They work through the churches with HIV and AIDS. Most of the communities that we're involved with in third world countries, the church is the center of that community, no matter what religion it is. They're the largest privately funded humanitarian organization providing aid to Muslim, Hindu, and Buddhist countries. And of course, the funding they receive from USAID to the tune of 240 million last year cannot have any religion attached. In Mauritania, our, our national director was shot twice, her daughter's been shot. Solving the needs of the poor in sustainable ways is really rocket science. If it was easy, it would have been done years ago. We all know how difficult it is and what has to be done. It's great to have a partner on the ground that knows how to do it. And it takes a lot more than just money. It takes the incredible implementation this is just one of the areas that I see such a synergy with World Vision and Rotary. We implemented over $240 million of USAID projects last year. They have the credibility and the accountability to do the projects. So if you're currently looking at doing a project, wanting to do a project, let me get a hold of you. Let me connect you with the people that run the countries that you want to do the projects in. That's where you want to design the work. I'll work at getting the funding for you if there's a synergy and it looks like we can do it. When you see the goals that Ron showed you from the wash rig folks, you'll see that they match exactly with the way that we do it at World Vision, doing larger, sustainable, great impact projects. That's what I do at World Vision, helping clubs and districts meet and exceed their goals, but important of all, we're changing the world for children and the communities in a sustainable way providing hope for tomorrow, life in all of its fullness. Thank you very much.